Christian witness. Pastors and churches should address politics because it is within the church's mission, is a discipleship issue, and Christian engagement affects a watching world. The evangelical church's Christian witness matters individually, corporately, and generationally. Individual witness. Since the proliferation of social media and the increase of heated volatility in politics, many Christians have struggled to best express themselves online. Instead of trying to model Christ-like behavior, they have gone on the offensive. Baylor University preaching professor Dr. Scott Gibson summarizes the problem. Take a look at posts on Twitter or Facebook by people who profess Christ. These posts appear to reflect more commitment to one's political party than to the gospel. The gospel seems to be absent from their posts. Instead, what one finds is meanness, hatefulness, spitefulness, certainly not characteristics of a maturing, growing Christian. Page through the New Testament and you'll see that one of the qualities of believers is that they are to have a good reputation among those who aren't believers. Christians who push their excessive political party priorities in a disparaging manner do damage to their reputation as a believer and to the gospel. Instead of engaging in civil discourse, letting their gentleness be evident to all, many believers engage in uncivil combat. Their posture mars their witness and the witness of the churches they attend. Christians need to model a more Christ-like way. Whether two Christians are quarreling online or a self-identified believer is arguing with their non-believing co-worker. Thankfully, many have. However, we should consider another witness, that of evangelicals as a whole. Evangelical Witness The corporate Christian community should take into account the perception of the non-Christian culture it inhabits. If, as some say, perception is reality, how does a watching world perceive evangelical Christianity? The answer should give pastors and churches pause. When protesters stormed the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021, a watching world saw what they interpreted as Christianity on full display. One man on the Washington Mall carried a large wooden cross and prayed. Another a poster with Bible verses and a corresponding list of politicians and causes. And others shouted their love for Jesus and President Trump. One man even carried a Christian flag into the Capitol. When the insurrectionists reached the Senate chambers, they shouted Jesus' name, bowed heads, and prayed. One reporter for the Atlantic identified the storming of the Capitol as a Christian insurrection and holds all evangelicals responsible. Reporter Emma Green writes, White evangelicals, in particular, overwhelmingly supported Trump in 2016 and 2020. Some of these supporters participated in the attack on the Capitol on Wednesday, but many in the country hold all Trump voters responsible, especially those who lent him the moral authority of their faith. While it is tempting for my faith group, evangelicals, to attribute the problem to extremist actions, our witness was already in question. NPR religion and belief correspondent Tom Jelton summarizes the connection I believe many non-Christians are making. On the Sunday following the 2020 election, Jelton reported, A notable fact in 2016 was that exit polls showed about 80% of white evangelical Christians supported Trump in spite of his unfamiliarity with the Bible, his divorces, his vulgar rhetoric, and his association with porn stars. Trump's reputation in moral terms hasn't changed all that much during his time in office, but there is little evidence of slippage among these faith voters. Since the start of his presidential race, President Trump never shied away from saying things that many found offensive. Some of his comments toward immigrants, a disabled reporter, women, and his general rhetoric led many to wonder how evangelicals could continue to support him. And yet, in 2016, 81% of evangelicals did vote for Trump. Some think white evangelicals voted for Trump because he was not Hillary Clinton or because he was pro-life and pro-religious liberty. Christianity Today analyzed the 81% of evangelicals who voted for him in 2016. They found most were not enthusiastic about him, but voted for him because of his positions on the economy, healthcare, national security, and immigration, not for being pro-life or pro-religious liberty. In the same study, Christianity Today reported what non-believers thought of evangelicals. Those concerned about compromising the church's witness by ignoring or justifying immoral behavior for societal gain will be little surprised to learn that when our researchers asked non-evangelicals 
which characteristic describe evangelical Christians the most cited by almost four in 10 was hypocritical. The charge of hypocrite is painful to hear and deeply concerning. My evangelical community needs to not ignore this charge, but assess whether it has merit. During the 2016 presidential election, a LifeWay survey of Protestant pastors found 27% of pastors say personal character is the most important characteristic of a presidential candidate, which was the most common answer. For some reason, what pastors believed and valued was not received by their congregations. Without pastors and churches doing intentional political discipleship, the church may align with any candidate, no matter their character. They may do so regardless, but at least ministers will have done their part to make disciples first. Generational Witness The current partisan patterns are also alienating those in the next generation. Quoting American Grace, How Religion Divides and Unites Us, Pastor and author Clay Stauffer writes, Statistics show that church attendance and religious affiliation among the younger generation, the millennials, are in sharp decline. There could be many reasons for this, but Putnam and Campbell argue that over-politicization in churches has been a turnoff to the millennial generation. The politicization of religion has triggered a negative reaction among some, mostly young, Americans. They have pulled away from religion precisely because they perceive it as an extension of partisan politics with which they do not agree. Millennials see religion tied up with the conservative politics, and their aversion to the latter has led them to reject the former. Many younger believers desire to love God and neighbor, including immigrants, refugees, and those within the Black community. These positions, however, are not typical Republican causes. Over time, if their Christian communities insist that to be Christian is to be Republican, they may watch as their children walk away from the faith. Churches need a different way of engaging culture for the sake of the next generation of believers. Thank you for reading chapter one along with me. I'd be really curious to know what you think. Political discipleship is a very interesting issue. Please leave a comment below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Doing that helps others find this resource as well. Hopefully it's valuable and honors Jesus. Thank you and God bless.